All right, hello everyone. I hope you are doing great again. So this is the third session and we are going to start a new lesson. But before that, I would like you to remind me about what did you have last time in Google Classroom? So the lesson was about the teacher's roles and the different learning styles. Can you remind me what are the roles that teachers should play in EFIL classes? Any volunteer? What are the roles? Yes. Yes. Um, hello. Yes, uh, Saida. Um, monitor. Good to monitor. Thank you. So, what does it mean? Any other volunteer? What do we buy to monitor? Sorry. What does it mean to monitor? Others. Yeah, to monitor is when you uh, monitoring. Yes, Rima, go ahead. Yeah, monitoring is observing uh, the kids or the students. Good, that's nice. Yes, so monitoring and also, also yeah, yeah, Ines. they need help. But also to help them, and you see whether they need help in particular. Great. Wonderful, thank you. So to monitor is when you give a task to students and you tell them work in groups of four, okay? Five minutes, then they are working groups and your job is to go around the classroom. So you are going around to observe, number one, if they are on task and number two, if they need some help, you can help them, great. Give me other roles. So to monitor, um, planner. Planner, great. Yeah, before you teach, you have to plan. Yes, yes. good night. Muhammad Bizri. Yes, others, what do you think? Manager. Manager, your job manager. is to manage, to put students into manager. groups. Yes, good. Um, facilitator. Sir? Great facilitator. Yeah, Muhammad Buziani. Yeah, he. Yeah, he's also a performer. Yes, performer uh, or informer. Yeah, performer. Good. Thank you. Yes. Very interesting. Great. So the teacher plays different jobs, different roles to monitor, to assess, assessor, to evaluate, evaluator to participate, participant, uh, to involve, involve, well, there are many, okay. And there are some roles that teachers play in the, uh, I mean, before the lesson, during the lesson, and after the lesson. So before the lesson, teachers play the role of the planner, of the diagnostician, etc. Diagnostician. Great. And during the lesson, there are different roles. Participant, uh, if you participate, Involver, you involve, monitor, facilitator, assessor, etc. So these are some roles. Now, what about the different learning styles? Can you give me some names, examples? Uh, uh, auditory, auditory. Good. So visual. Visual. Explain. Yeah. Auditory are good at what? Are good at? Listening. Listening. Yeah, they are very good at listening. So when there is a song, they learn better. When there is an audio, they learn better. When you when you talk or when you tell them about a story and they are listening, they learn better. So take it for granted that some of your learners will or they are auditory learners. They love listening. Good. Second one, second type. Visual. Visual. Yeah, great. Say the visual. So they are good at what? At seeing, remarking, remarking and seeing. Seeing a video. So a video, a poster, a picture, body language, etc. Great. So which means another category of learners that you will have visual learners. Number three. Verbal. Uh, kinesthetic. Yeah, verbal, kinesthetic, verbal. They talk a lot 
and they write. They learn better if there is writing. They learn better if there's a role play, communication. And kinesthetic movement. They want to body language. Down. They want to go to the board. They want to play rules and they stand up and they talk. Okay. They want to touch. They like learning by doing. We call them physical learners or kinesthetic learners. Great. Which means again, some students in your classes, they will not stop. They will move all the time using their legs, their hands, doing like this. They keep moving. Those are physical or kinesthetic learners. Great. Another category. Uh, logical. Good. By logical. Sequencing. Pushing things into order, etc. Great. Or you have more than one. Two, three, four. What do we call them? Or uh, combi combinatory. Com I think combina yeah. combinatory. <laughs> combination. Combinatory. Combinatory learners. They are good at reading, writing speak, etc. Good. So did you do the quiz about learning styles? The quiz, did you do it or not yet? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes I sure. did. What is your learning style? Mine is auditory. Uh, so let's start. Mine is a mixture of verbal, auditory, and visual. <laughs> yes, Shayma. Oh, sir, uh, my, mine is, yeah, mine is auditory. Auditory, good. In, uh, Ines. Uh, a mixture of free visual and um, kinesthetic. So you are combinatory, good. Muhammad Buzian. So I didn't do it just, uh, not yet. Yeah. So next time, good. Amel, Zahra. Yeah. I will do it tonight. Yes, no problem, yeah. So Muhammad is combinatory, combinatory. Visual. Amel, Zahra. For me, it's visual. visual. It's visual. I'm also a combinatory. I use both visual and auditory a lot. Great. Aisha. You can write in the chat box if there is some technical issues. OK, great. So as you see that you have got different learning styles. So please, when you are teaching, don't let your learning style dominate your teaching style. For example, I'm a teacher, I'm visual, which means I don't have all the time to teach using visual, visualization, using pictures, videos, because I'm not teaching myself. I'm teaching a group of students who have got different learning styles. So please, don't let your learning style dominate your teaching style. Is it clear? Because sometimes some teachers love using music. They love using listening. They love use, using audios. They are auditory learners. What about your learners? You have got different learners. So please, you are not teaching yourself. You are teaching other students. And again here, the key is variety. Variety is the spice of life. If you want to meet the needs and wants of your learners, vary your materials, vary your instructions, vary your activities. For everything in your classes, you have to add variety. Is it clear so far? Yes. 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 I guess that's enough about the review. So let's move on to the next session or the next um, presentation or workshop. So let me share the slides, great. So today we are going to study about how to teach reading communicatively. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Great, yes. yes. Thank yes. you. All right, so today there are five aims and these are the ones. Number one, we are going to start with the introduction. What is reading? What is not reading? Then what are the difficulties, the challenges that students will face and the teacher he or she may face when, when he or she is teaching? And of course, to overcome these challenges, we need some techniques and strategies. We, they help us to teach effectively and they help learners to learn better. 
And of course, these techniques, strategies, we are going to put them into practice, into action. So it's the classroom implications. Number five is a summary of the whole session. Great. Now, the first question, why do you read? Why? I'm going to put you in groups uh, of four, and I'm going to give you five minutes. So why do you read? So let's see how many of you here. You are up to our channel. Okay, great. So please join your groups. All right, so Abdul Kareem, Mohammed, Hasna, Group One, Halima, Inas, Zahra, Amal, Group Two, Salma, Al Ayadi, Sadia, Mohammed, Group Three, and Aisha, Group Number One. Please, Aisha, join the group. clearly articulate what uh, we want to say. Uh, the knowledge we gain uh, from reading also gives us a lot to talk about to uh, when speaking with ours. So it uh, enriches our vocabulary, uh, how words are uh, spelled. So mm -hmm. this is it. So one minute for each speaker, one minute. Okay, so why? What, what is the purpose behind reading? Great, Abdul Karim, yes, others, you continue. So for me, I think it's the same, but uh, uh, it's more uh, English because for English, I'm uh, more uh, interested in English uh, from when I was little. So for English, it's uh, I think it's too near for my heart. So English uh, to improve my my vocabulary, as uh, you said early, and yes. also from culture. So for Arabic, uh, I like uh, most to read the uh, Egyptian uh, uh, Egyptian uh, story. Or, right. Culture. Yeah, uh, Egyptian story? culture. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Interesting. Great. Continue. Each one should have uh, one minute. Good. <laughs> I do enjoy reading self-improvement um, books. So, great. yes. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about you? Yes. I don't read. I hate reading. <laughs> I'm just watching. <laughs> okay. So we don't like reading. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you yeah. just need to start one book. I will I will suggest to, to start with uh, The Miracle Morning. You will enjoy this book. Wow, interesting. Yeah. It's great. great. Yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, oh, so my pleasure. Yes. So let's go back to the main session. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. So I really enjoyed um, listening to the majority of you. And some of you said they want to read for the purpose of expanding their vocab bank. That's really interesting. But here, let's see why. There are two major reasons. Number one, we read for a purpose. And some of you said to expand my vocab. I want to get more vocabulary words. And some of you said, I would like to entertain, to enjoy, to feel happy because when I read stories, I feel excited, I feel happy, etc. So these are the, the two major reasons. Number one, we, we read for a purpose. 
I read to get a good mark. I read to learn more vocab. I read to understand the text. Or I read a story to feel happy, um, to get excited, etc. So these are the two major re reasons. Now, there is, a, there is a situation here. And your job is to read the, the, the problem that Jamal has got. And then you answer question one and two. But before that, any volunteer to read the, the situation? Yes, any volunteer? Um, can I read? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, Jamal is a teacher of English. Last Friday, he taught elementary level class. He gave his students an interesting text and told them to read and answer WH questions and true false statements. After 15 minutes, the majority of students could not raise their hands to answer. Jamal felt frustrated. Just a very few students who could answer the questions. What was wrong with Jamal's class and what should be done to improve the situation? Great, yes, now. I want you to work in pairs. You read the situation again. You have five minutes, answer question one and two. Yes, five minutes. Let me put you again in pairs. Just one second. I'm creating the... Great, so here we have group one, Shayma Hasna, group two, Abdel Karim Muhammad, group three, Muhammad Saida, and group four, uh, Ines and Amal. All right, please discuss. Then we have Halima, you move to group number, group number three. Okay. gave them a text and like very few students uh, who could answer the questions. What do you think? What's the what's wrong with Gemma's class? I think that he should give him give them um, time to uh, read and uh, reread the text again and then mm -hmm. help them uh, to uh, answer the questions. I think he should also monitor the chronometer. Uh, so he should he should have given them more time. Yeah, yeah he should actually. He starts by explaining by putting the text uh, in a context, then moving to explain uh, vocabulary, difficult vocabulary. Uh, yeah. So, so that they can uh, understand what the text is going to be a word. Yeah, great, yeah. yeah. That's so what the, teacher didn't the teacher didn't respect the, the process of... Uh, we ask them, uh, uh, what the, the, do you think about the story? Or uh, we don't ask them what questions and false and true. They are not for elementary students. Yes. yes. And the, the context also, the teacher he doesn't uh, put the students in the context. Very good. <laughs> Go. Uh, 
you. Yeah. Thank you. So the, the I think uh, the, uh, the uh, problem uh, is the, in the question. All right, difficult questions? Yes, the, right. it's not for their level. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, they could, he could have uh, asked you each questions so, and the true and false statements. So he made them feel yeah, like- So I think it's, yeah, maybe a, a problem of managing time, then uh, give uh, maybe more, uh, uh, more, uh, I think uh, text with pictures, second 10, then... And also the time. I think 15 minutes may not be enough for the students to read and answer the WH questions and true and false statements, especially they are elementary. Um, uh, students who belong to elementary level, so they are still... Beautiful. What do you beginning. think about the beginning? Uh, the teacher starts doing what? With the asking students to read, yeah. Yes, he didn't give, he didn't try to do warm ups, maybe to put them in the context, Perfect. just try to grab their attention and Great. make them feel. So, in the beginning, we should, the, to them. we should motivate them, we should build interest, then we yes. can give them a text to read. Wonderful, yes. Yes. Good. And also, I can see from the pictures that the students feel bored. The picture with the, with the, with the description, I can see students who feel like sleepy and bored, so they may not feel like they really like the session. Just because right. of the... Very interesting. All right. Yes. All right, so it was very interesting listening to each group. And again, the majority uh, folks or something very interesting, the type of questions maybe were difficult. And some of you, okay, talked about that the beginning was not good because the teacher should have started with warm up activities, with pre reading activities, etc. Great. So let's see here. Jamal is a teacher of English last Friday. He taught elementary. So the level elementary, very important. He gave his students an interesting text. So the material was great. The material was motivating, was interesting, but the problem was with the teacher's style and told them to read and answer questions and true false statements. After 15 minutes, the majority of students could not raise their hands. So Jamal, from the very beginning, he asked his learners to read the text. My question, do you think it's a good idea to start, with, to start asking your learners to read the text from the, big, from the very beginning? What no, do you think? sir, he should uh, firstly start with the title, maybe the picture, uh, doing some brainstorming about like the uh, topic. Perfect, So Jamel. yeah, some pre-reading activities. Well done, yeah. So what was wrong with Jamel's class? Jamel, maybe, he does not know how to teach reading effectively. He does not know about the stages. He does not know about the sub skills. He does not know how to facilitate the learning process of his learners. Because from the very beginning, he asked his students to start reading. And this is the, the worst way a teacher can do. Now, number two, what should be done to improve the situation? Some of you said, let's start with warm up, pre read activities, etc. So let's see here the feedback. What is not reading in infant classes? What is not reading is when you ask your learners from the very beginning, open your books, read the text. Come on, this is not reading. So look here, teacher, students, teacher, hello. Students, hello, teacher. Teacher, open your books, page 37. Students, okay, teacher, teacher, read the text and answer the questions. Students, oh my God, what's this? Difficult text, I don't like it, it's boring. How come? Very confusing. So the students are not or don't feel okay with the way the teacher is going or what the teacher teaches the reading lesson. So please, the worst ways is to ask your learners 
to start reading. Never do it. Good. Now look here again. How do you read and listen? Lots of people would say with eyes and ears. Do you agree? How do you read and listen? Most or lots of people would say with eyes and ears. Do you agree or disagree? Can you write in the chat box? Ida said yes, she agrees. Muhammad, yes. Uh, Bizri Muhammad, no. Halima, yes. Aisha, no. Ines, we need to use all our senses, great. Amal Zahra, no. Okay. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree? So the majority said we don't agree. So we read and listen with the eyes and the ears, great. Now let's see, I don't know, because we are going to, to see at the end if you are, if it is, if you agree or not. We don't know if we listen and, and read all the time with the eyes and ears. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, I want you to read the, the following headline and tell me what the text will be about. Please, you should take the role of the beginner, beginner level, headline. Beer destroyed by the cowboys. So what do you think? Read the following headline and tell me what the text will be about. So can you do it alone? So we have animals and by the cowboys, human being. And then there is a, an action verb. The verb is negative. So what do you think? the tax will be about. Okay, what do you think? So please take the role of the beginner, not the university student. If you read this headline, what comes in your mind? The first thing comes in your mind. Yes. Animal attack on people. Great. So animal attacking people. Great. Yes. Others. The hunt. Killing bears. Shayma said hunting. Great. Thank you. Yes. What else? Wonderful. So some of you said um, animals are killed, hunt, etc. Great. And here we can see if you agree or disagree that we read and listen only when we use our ears and, and, and eyes. So let's see here. Which means now I haven't shown the text yet. I have just presented the headline. Can you read here? What do you think? Yes, please. What do you think? Should we use only the ears and the mind and the, and the eyes or also the mind? No, sir. No. <laughs> right. no. Minds and our imagination. Yes, which means reading is an active process. We need to use the mind. We have to activate student schemata, what students already know about the topic. We call it the pre-existent knowledge. Look here. I'm going to give the students from the very beginning title or the headline, bears destroy cowboys or destroyed by cowboys. So beginners or students in general, they, they think that animals are killed by human being. Okay. But then we see that we are not talking about animals. We are talking about the American football game, which means we should use both the eyes and minds to read. So students should not just read and listen, but they have to use their minds. Great. Is it clear so far? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. Here. yes. Now yes here, sir. The key skills is this one. Reading and listening are not simply matter for the eyes and the ears, but also a matter of using our minds.
to literally understand words and process them in our pre-existent knowledge. What do we mean by pre-existing knowledge? What students already know. For example, I would like to teach a text about hobbies. Number one, before giving, them, giving students the text about hobbies, I have to ask them some questions. What is your favorite hobby? Swimming or playing soccer? Yes, swimming. No, playing soccer. Do you agree or disagree? So pre-existent knowledge, what they already know about the topic. Why? To gain true understanding. Then you give them the checks. Okay. So we call it pre-existent knowledge. Great, look here. Next question. What are the reading subskills? Can someone remind us or if you know them? I think it's pre-reading. Uh -huh. While reading and and um, uh, Saida, are these uh, subskills or the Saida, are these subskills or stages? What do you think? Oh no no, it's stages. Thank you, Saida. Sir, yeah. uh, yes. can sir? I say? Yes, sir. Yeah. Halima? Um, uh, I maybe think it's it's scanning. scanning. It's Halima. Yeah. I think we <laughs> were speaking at the same time. Scanning and skimming. Yeah, yeah, scanning, skimming, intensive reading and extensive reading. What do you think? Extensive and intensive, are, they, uh, are these sub skills? Uh, I think. No. no. So, skimming, scanning, these are sub skills. I agree. But extensive and intensive, these are kind of strategies or um, et cetera. Okay. Great. So the the major yes, Shema, you wanna add something else? No, I just wanna thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Great. So let's see here. Look here, scheming, scanning, summarizing, inferring, prediction, reading for detail. Great. So these are the major reading subskills and listening subskills for the chair. Good. Very confusing, skimming and scanning. We should know about them. Then we have prediction, reading for detail, inference, summarizing. So these are the six major reading subskills. Now, let's move to practice. Can you match prediction, skimming, reading for detail, scanning, and inferring? I, I would like to give you five minutes or four minutes and then you work in groups. At first you work alone, then you compare answers with the whole group. So five minutes, let me put you in groups or in pairs, sorry. You still work in pairs. Do you see the? Okay, can you see them or not? Can you please join the groups or the pairs? So five minutes, then we can discuss. What? You were culture? You you studied culture? Hasna and Shema. What do you mean culture? Um yes sir. <laughs> you are talking about culture, but here the, it's about the sub skills. No, we were just uh, discussing because she said that uh, she has no idea about this uh, sub skills. I asked her if she was studying uh, culture. Yeah, Hasna, what did yeah, you study at the, your major at the university? English studies, which? Uh... 
He, he was a literature. He was literature. Oh, the literature, great. Oh, yeah. Because it was applied linguistics. That's no. that's my question. I have never yeah. seen. <laughs> okay. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, Kareem, we can hear you. Uh, I guess uh, the other participants uh, can't hear me and they don't yeah, but, participate. But, but, but do you see the screen? Do you see the screen or not? No, but I uh, I still have uh, the task uh, on my phone. I took a picture. Okay, great. But I guess I have to, to close now all the groups because we have to go back to the exercise. So now I, I would like to give you extra four minutes, but let's do number all together. Reading quickly to find specific information. What do you think this one is? Any volunteer? The first one is for you all. Skimming? So reading quickly no. to find, skimming or scanning? It's scanning. Thank you. Scanning. 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 You read the text quickly, the title, look at the picture, the first line, the last line, then you can, oh, sorry, this is, uh, sorry, this is skimming, but scan is reading quickly to find specific information. Great. Now, read it to understand every word in a part of a text. You are going to read to understand this is, everything. Uh, skimming. Reading for detail? Wonderful, uh, reading for detail, okay. Great, every word in a part of a text. Looking at the title, pictures and layout to predict what the text might be about. Prediction. Prediction. Great. So, before, because Jamal from the very beginning, he gave his students the reading text. Now you can start with prediction. Look at the title, look at the picture, read the title, read the first line, the last line. What do you think the text will be about? Great. Reading quickly to give the main idea. What scheming. is this? Scheming. Great, scheming. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Guessing or understanding the meaning of a word in the text or right attitude. What's this? Inference. Wonderful. So these are the reading sub skills. Is it clear so far? Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Right. So let's move on to the next slide. So please uh, remember skimming, general idea, scanning to scan, specific. Both have got something in common, which is quickly, you read quickly. Now, what are the strategies uh, for reading? Here we have two, we have extensive versus intensive. Look at the, the, the two pictures, which one is intensive and which one is extensive? We have the one on my left hand and the the right hand, which one is intensive? Yeah, yes, Muhammad. Yes, yes, the first uh, in 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 the letter in right. It's an extensive reading. So the classroom. For, uh, how, uh, the, the, no, uh, intense, intensive reading the classroom. Great. And the, the lady, the girl alone at home? Yeah. Extensive. Thank you. So what do we mean by intensive? Because they're out, out classroom. Great. 
So let's see here, intensive reading, the place is the classroom, inside the classroom. What about the length of the checks? Short checks, because you have only one hour and you have 15 minutes for reading the checks. So we should give you short checks. And what's the purpose? To learn and study the language. This is the purpose. The place, the classroom, the length, short checks, and the purpose to learn and study. Great. Now, extensive reading, the place is outside, the street, the forest, the theater, uh, at home, wherever you are, except the classroom. The length of the checks, long checks, novels, stories, plays. So you enjoy reading them. It's for pleasure. Good. For intensive reading, you have questions and you have to answer them. For extensive reading, you may not have questions. You may not. You may have, but basically you may not have questions. Okay. Which means that you as a teacher, you have to encourage not only intensive, but also extensive reading. Students should read outside the classroom. Okay. Is it clear so far about the two? Intensive and extensive. Yes, sir. Great. Yes, yes. sir. So let's move yes. on to the next one. Now we have two processes to understand the text. We can understand, students can understand the text by or when the teacher uses top down or bottom up. We are going to see the difference between the two. So we have top down and bottom up, top outside the text. You, you still don't deal with the text. You haven't read the text yet. Bottom, bottom up inside the text. You are reading the text. The information is in the text. Good. For example, let's go back to the example of a text about hobbies. The teacher will not give them the text. The teacher will show two pictures. Swimming, playing soccer, which one do you prefer? So what is this? Is it top down or bottom up? What do you think? Top down. Thank you, top down because there is no text. We haven't read the text yet. So let's see. The definition here, someone to read the definition of the bottom up. I can read. Yes. Okay. So uh, bottom up processing happens when someone tries to understand language by looking at individual meanings or grammatical characteristics of the most basic units units of the text. That is to mean, um, no, for example, sounds for a listening or words for a reading and moves from these to trying to understand the whole text. Example, asking learners to read aloud may encourage bottom-up processing because they focus on word forms. Now okay, great. So this is the bottom-up, which means in the text, you are going to see sounds, words, etc. You cannot understand them unless you read the text. It's the bottom-up. Great. The second one, top down or yes, sorry, top down. Yes, any volunteer? Can I read? Yes, please. Uh, top down processing of, of language happens when someone uses background information to predict the meaning of language they are going to listen to or read, rather than relying first on the actual words or sounds bottom up, uh, they develop expectation about what they will hear and or read and confirm or reject these or listen or read. These as, as they listen or read, sorry. Uh, example, asking learners to predict what a newspaper article may be about from the, the headline or first sentence will encourage them to use top-down processing or on, an art on the article. Great, thank you. 
Let's go back to the example of the text about hobbies. The teacher, number one, we start with the title, my favorite hobby. So what do you think the text will be about? Can you guess? What is this? Is it top down or bottom up? Please, what do you think? Top down. Top down. Top down. Thank you. The teacher in the very beginning will show them three pictures, swimming, fishing, dancing. What are these? Ah, oh, hobbies. So what's your favorite? Is it dancing, fishing, or swimming? What is this? Is it top down or bottom up? Uh, still top down. Thank you, great. Now, go to paragraph number three in the text and try to find the meaning of happy, adjective happy. What is this? Bottom up. Top down. Bottom up. Because now we are swimming in the chats. You see, is it clear now so far the difference between the two? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, sir. Look, yes, yes, sir. Could you please repeat the, the second one, top down processing? Top or bottom up? Top, top down. Yeah, top down is in the beginning of the lesson, which means you have the text, but you don't show the text. You just tell them to read the title and guess what the text will be about. This is top down. Or you show them some pictures. Can you look at the pictures and think with your partner what the text will be about? Okay. Or read the first line, the first sentence, and guess what the text will be about. This is the top down. What does it mean top down? The top down, you are outside the text. You haven't started reading the text yet. And this is what Jamal did not do. Jamal, as a teacher, from the very beginning, he asked them to read the text. He started with the bottom, okay, down, okay. Yes. You so far or to, to clarify more? No, no, it's clear. Right, thank All you. All clear. Yes, so let's move on to the next one. Now let's practice. Look here, this is a Moroccan textbook. I don't know the purpose of task four, five, six, and seven. Then decide whether they are pre-reading, while reading, or post-reading. So let's start with the the stages, if they are pre, while, or post. Number four, look at the pictures and answer these questions. Who are the people in the pictures? Where can you find these people? So activity number four, is it the pre-reading, the while reading, or the post-reading? It's the pre-reading. Pre-reading. Pre-reading, you agree? Pre-reading. So what do we buy? What is pre-reading? And here, my question, are they, if they want to answer these questions, do, have, do they have to read or not? No, maybe this pre-existing knowledge, the pre-existing knowledge of students. Yeah, so they don't have to read the text. They have just to look at the pictures. So let's see here. So activity number four is the pre Reading, great. Three, reading stage. Perfect. Good. Number six, read the encyclopedia entry and answer these questions. Number six, discuss, check the true statements about the pygmies and check your answers. What is this, five and six? What do you think, five and six? Why, Why reading? reading? Why reading? Perfect. Why? Because they have to read. They cannot answer these questions unless they read while reading stage. Great. Now, number seven. Discuss with your partners why the pygmy's life is difficult. What Post is reading. Post reading, which means they are going to discuss, to bring what they already know and compare it with the text. So post, they are going to use their own language. 
both within stage. Okay, great. Now, let's move to question four. Look at the pictures and answer these questions. What is the purpose of this activity? The purpose? Uh, context. Contextualization, okay. Uh -huh. What else? To creating context. Contextualization, good. What else? Checking the pre-existing knowledge. Yes, pre-exist, yes, or schemata, great. Contextualization. What is the sub-skill here we are using? Is it uh, sc scanning? Good, production. Scanning. Scan skimming. Great, so prediction, very interesting. So it's the purpose. You, you are creating contacts, you are helping students to guess and to read quickly, okay. Now, number five, read the encyclopedia into and answer these questions. Where do the pygmies, are they afraid of the forest? Where, what sub skills here? Reading for details. Great, yes. thank you. Reading for detail. We can say also reading Stunning. for specific, yeah. So reading for details. Okay, great. And the last one is the discuss. It's the production. Students are going to produce their own language. Okay, is it clear so far about the stages? Yes. And here, look at number four, five, six, seven. Jamal, as a teacher, which exercise that he skipped? He did not do. Which one? I think the first one. The pre reading. Good. The first one. The first one, number four. From the very beginning, he starts with number five read the text. Okay. Great. Remember, that you cannot start a lesson unless you prepare, unless you build interest, unless you motivate students, then you can start the lesson. So let's move on to the next one. Great. So here, these are the stages, pre-reading. The pre-reading, you can use a picture to activate background knowledge. We call it also schemata, or the pre-existent knowledge, or the prior knowledge. And also you can teach vocab. You read the text at home and you will find five or four or six words. They may block the meaning. You have to pre-teach them because they are very important. Number three, use the title to predict the content of the text. Why reading? Answer just questions, general questions, details, WH question. Read the text in detail, true, false questions. Match the sentence halves about the, the text content. So these are the why. WH questions, true, false, match, complete, etc. And then there is the last stage, which is the post reading. You can ask students to summarize, to describe, to compare, or do you agree or disagree with the writer's idea, etc. So please, when you are teaching, try to avoid the problem that Jamal faced, which is skipping the pre-reading stages. Okay, great. Now, let's practice again. Look here. So look here. The picture, what's the title? What is the title? A family who sailed around the world. But this is the title, this is the title. Around the the world. 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 Yes. Now, 
I want you to start teaching this lesson. You start with what exactly? So this is a text about around the world. There is a picture there or not? Is there a picture or no? Yes. Yes. Is there, is there a title or not? Yes. Yes. Good. So now your job is to prepare, build interest, and motivate. This is the pre-reading. So you are going to start with what? Prediction. Very Prediction. good. Prediction. Yes. What kind of questions would you ask? Um, um, who can tell me what the text will be about? Because from the title? Thank Read you. the title and uh, yes. the, 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 picture. the picture and uh, suggest what the text is going to be about, maybe. Wonderful. Great. What else? So using the picture. How, uh, how, uh, yes, how, uh, how, uh, with, with what uh, you want, uh, uh, what, with what you want uh, to, uh, uh -huh. to do, I mean to visit with what? Good. So Maybe what did you family yeah. or it's a All production. Right. Yeah, production. Great. Now here, I can start, for example, hello everyone, how are you? Great, yes. Look at the picture. How many people are there. So you, you, you play the role of the learner. How many people are there? How many? Five. 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 Great. Five people. What do you think? Are they one family or not? Yeah. Yes. yes. They are one family. Good. Is a small or big family? Small family. Yeah, compared to Morocco, it's a small family because in Morocco we may have more than three, five, six, seven. Six. Yes, it's like a team. Barcelona, Real Madrid, six. twelve. Great. Look at look at them. Are they happy or not? Yeah. 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 Yes, they are happy. Why they are happy? What do you think? They are happy. I'm using my body language because they are going to to. Thank travel you. Really? to travel and you preach each book up. Traveling is a noun when you go somewhere to have fun, to travel, to fly. Okay, great. Where it's the this one? What is this? The world, oh, the world, oh, no, no, no. right? So, the world, you write it, it's n now. Repeat the world. The word, great, traveling, traveling, very good, nice. Now, I want you to look at the picture again and you read the title and then you tell me the text will be about what? Please, in pairs, four minutes, great. Now, do you understand? Is this clear? Yes. Yes. yes sir. And if students say yes, you tell them to restate. Restate my instruction. What did they say? Repeat. What did they say? Look at the picture. Uh -huh. In pairs, uh, pre four in pairs. pairs. The, the text was, is going to be. And how much time? Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Group or pairs? Pairs. Pairs. Great. Yes. Which means that when you give instructions, don't tell your learners, do you understand? All of them, they will say, yes, teacher, it's clear. No, tell them, yes, so what, what should you do? What do you have to do? Number one, you look at the picture, great, what else? You read the title, great, what else? And then guess, great, uh -huh. what else? In pairs, uh -huh. how much time? Five or four minutes. This way will help the teacher to be assured that students know what they are going to do. Is this clear about instructions? Yes. yes. So please try to avoid, do you understand or is it clear? Tell your learner to restate what they should do. Okay. Now, activity number one, do you like traveling by boat 
When was the last time you traveled by boat? Where did you go? Did you enjoy it? So this question is the pre-reading, but what's the purpose again? Read the question, what's the purpose? Contextualization. Contextualization, great. What else? Building interest. Building interest, great. What Build else? Which sub-skill? Sub-skill. Predicting. Uh -huh, but here there is no prediction. It's a building interest, motivating, contextualization. Great. These are the sub skills, creating contacts. Okay. Great. Now, number two. Look at the so pictures. Look at the pictures and the title. What is the article about? Do you think? <coughs> Sorry, what is this? What sub skill is this? So, for number one, is creation contacts. For number two, look at the pictures and the title. What is the article about? What is this? What's, what what sub skill is this? Prediction. Prediction. Okay. Yes, to predict. To, to scan. Okay, good. Great. Now, B, listen and, and read the text. Check your answers is a concept chicken. Number three, correct the mistakes in the sentences. Compare answers in pairs. Which stage is this? Is it the pre or the while? While. Good. So while. this one is the pre, and this one is the while. Why? Because they are going to read that. They are going to listen. OK, great. Now, look here. What is missing in this text? What is missing? The post, the post reading activity. Thank you. The post reading activity. Now it's your job to design a post reading activity. I would like to give you five minutes. You have a look at the reading text. And what do you think the post read activity will be? Remember summary, description, agree, disagree, etc. So five minutes. You can think of an activity for your students as a post reading task. Okay, is it clear? Yes. So what should you do? Uh, create a post reading activity for the students. Good. Five minutes. You can you can uh, tell about uh, your travel. No, but I, I give you some time. Five minutes. about your travel. Yes, Muhammad, I give you some time. Take five minutes and write, take some notes and write about the activity. Then we can share it here in groups. Okay. Do you want to work in groups again or alone? What do you think now? Uh, maybe we can try individual work this time because we used to work in pairs and in group. Great. But so, this is just my opinion. Yes, so individually, great. Five minutes.
All right. So any volunteer? Have you done? Have you finished all of you? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, I have written two, oh, three <laughs> post reading activities. Yes, I can three. start with yeah. one if you, yeah, if you agree. So the first one is work with your partner and tell us what is your dream city or country you would like to travel to in the future. Can you repeat again? And, um, work with your partner and tell us what is your dream city or country you would like to travel to in the future. Great. Uh -huh. And then write a summary above the text. This is the second activity. Yes. <laughs> and the third one is write a short paragraph about your last travel with your family. These are my three post uh, reading activities. Yes. Come on. <laughs> How many activities? Three. What did so, I do? So, yeah, so how much time? Yeah. It's like punishment, it's a hoba. <laughs> no, no, not like in the same in, in the same day. I just write my uh, my examples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course this... I will choose just one. Great. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to choose only one. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> of yeah, course. because so for the time I will give them. I will give them five minutes. Uh huh. So five minutes yeah. for the post. Good. But do you think five minutes are enough? Not enough. Uh, not okay. enough. But because reading, maybe we will do the the session of reading in one hour. So uh, post reading, we should not uh, give them like so many time because we we still have uh, maybe. Uh, uh the assignment for home or homework maybe we have uh, some games to play at the end Good. so uh, so yeah so Shayma, look now you are going to teach a reading lesson you have 60 minutes for the reading text or the reading lesson but basically we do not teach 60 minutes so please remember all of you we don't teach 60 minutes we teach about 45 minutes, 45, why? Because at the end, students should copy, should write the lesson, okay? And if they want to write, they need about 10 minutes. Then you, you have only 50 minutes, okay, 50 minutes. So it's about 45 to 50 minutes of teaching because you take into account that students should copy their lessons at the end. Now, for the pre-reading, we can have about seven minutes pre-reading. For the while reading, we can have about 20 minutes. Okay. Or 15 or 17 minutes. For the post-reading, we can have about 10 minutes for students because the post-reading students should produce their language. They are going to summarize or describe, it, but please give them just one task so as not to be behind schedule. You may not have enough time. So I like the first question or activity. What would you like to, can you repeat again, Shayma? Which destination or your dream or future? Can you repeat again? Oh, yes, sir. So uh, work with your partner and tell us what is your dream city or country you would like to travel to in the future. Perfect. How much time? Five, seven. If it is five minutes, speaking is enough. Five minutes are enough. But if it is right, they have to write, then speak. Maybe they need more time. You agree, Shayma? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Yeah, I understand. And here we are going to integrate skills, not only reading. They are going to write and then read, speak and others are going to listen. So here we integrated the four skills, writing, they discuss, they speak, speaking, they read, reading, and they listen to each other, it's listening. Okay, great. Yes, other volunteers, what do you think? Um, can I, uh, can I uh, yes. talk about yes. my, 
Yes, yes. Um, I was thinking about an activity where I can um, make the students use their mind or their creativity more. So I was going to ask them to put the, their, um, themselves in the shoes of this family who sailed around the world and ask them, what if your family sailed around the world? And tell them to come up with a very short story, like, you know, just three or four sentences so they can uh, be more creative and tell us about their experience. Just imaginary experience. They don't have to actually sail around the world. So I was thinking about like around seven to eight minutes, maybe just so they can think about and improvise. But I don't know whether it is um, suitable as a post reading activity. Great. Yes, very interesting. How much time? Um, I was thinking about seven minutes because they have to imagine as if they were sailing around the world and uh, Tell them their experience. Mm. What about the, the mode of work? Individually, pair work or group work? Um, if, if there are too many students, I think I, I would choose um, um, uh, pair work. But if I'm teaching like a, a small number of students, maybe I can use individual um, uh, work. Yes, Ines, but it, it doesn't, dip, uh, I mean here, it's very important to have or to vary. No, uh, I mean here, I don't depend on if it's a small or a big class, but it depends on, uh, uh, I mean, motivating your learners, so variety. If you start if you start in the beginning with pair and individual work, maybe the, the post reading would be great if you assign uh, group work. So it depends. Like, mm -hmm. Yes, vary. yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Another yes, I see. I understand. Yes, Ines, thank you. Can I speak, uh, sir? Saida, yes. Fatum Zara Amel. Sorry, Fatum Zara Amel, yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, I can work with the, with the group uh, in uh, style of, uh, of group uh, and maybe give, uh, give them uh, may, uh, a lot of uh, ways or how do they prefer to 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 travel uh, like transportation by plane or I give them uh, maybe three or four example and divide them as they uh, uh, they choose the, like uh, what they prefer so when i can uh, divide them for small groups three or good for groups, then we every group can uh, can give their idea about uh, why they choose this uh, mode of transportation and with whom and where do they uh, maybe uh, or maybe go with around the world. And All right, that's nice. Very interesting activity. Yeah. Maybe take and they can take uh, about 10 minutes to 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 uh, to make their uh, their opinion with uh, each other nice good thank you okay another volunteer hasna sir sir yes Saida. yes this is My... Saida bin hasna okay so um my post reading uh, exercise will be about for example, write a short paragraph about your last trip with your family or friend. You choose, um, or just leave it as family, um, and uh, write about the interesting thing that happens or interesting thing that, how can we say it? Um, interesting things or activities that you did at the uh, trip and uh, that's it good, good. So write, yeah and at the, the end mm -hmm. discuss it discuss it with your partner good that's it yeah. that's nice idea so talk with your partner about the interesting the interesting activities you did in the trip or when you were traveling and discuss it. Great, yeah. How much time, Saida, for this activity? Uh, if they were right, I will give them uh, 10 minutes. Uh-huh, 10 minutes. But it's just, uh, if, it's, if, it's, if it is just a discussion with the partner, it will be just five minutes. Wonderful, very interesting. Yes, 
Thank you. The next one is uh, I said Saida and Ines, I guess. Uh, Hasna, sorry, Hasna. Hasna, yes. My, my post reading will be like this. I will say work in individuals and describe your own travel and where did you travel and with whom, how was the experience? Would you recommend the place you traveled to to your colleagues? And I will take about 10 minutes to, for each one to answer. That's it. Okay. So they have all of them they have to answer or just some of them? All of them. But, but do, you, do you think that you will have enough time if all students are going to answer? It depends on how many students do I have. If you have 30 students. If the, this is not enough. Yeah, if you have 30 students, that means you need 60 minutes. Everyone will yes. have two minutes, okay. Which yeah. means that it's not, it's not obligatory for you as a teacher to, uh, I mean, to ask all learners to answer, but a couple of them, okay. And then from time okay. to time, you ask new faces, okay. Great, thank you, Hasna. Okay. Yes. Yes, so let's see the next one. Just let me clear this one, just one second, good. Now, homework. Uh, at home, I want you to design at least one pre-reading task, one while reading task, and one post-reading task. And this is the, the reading um, checks. It's for beginners. Tom's day. On Sunday, Tom gets up at 10 o'clock. Then he reads his newspaper in the kitchen. He has breakfast at 11.30 uh, a.m. Then he telephones his mother in Scotland. In the afternoon at 1 p.m., Tom plays tennis with his sister. And after that, they ate din uh, they ate lunch, not dinner, sorry, in a restaurant. At 6, Tom swims for one, etc. So you read the text carefully. Then you design activity one for pre, activity two for, for while, and activity three for post. Is it clear? Um, yes, but it should be write it down, send it to you. Yes, uh, in, in Google Classroom. So what's your job? Number one, you are going to do what? Yes, go on to design uh, pre-reading task and uh, while reading and post-reading. Thank you. Yes, great. Now is the summary. So let's have a review. All of you, can you define the following terms? Receptive skills, what are they? Reading and... Uh... Listening, yeah. Thank you. Reading, reading and in listening. The... Two skills. They are receptive. Reading and listening. What yeah. about predictive skills? What are they? Uh, speaking and writing. Writing. I'm writing. not talking about productive. I'm talking about predictive. Be. Predictive. predictive. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. What are they? It means you have contextualization. Contextualization, guessing, asking questions. And so, uh, scanning. Schemata. Schematization soon, schemata. Great. Thank you. Number three, skimming. What is skimming? Skimming is. Uh, uh, reading quickly to get the main uh, idea. Uh, quick, uh, quick. Uh, so, quick uh, yes, reading quickly to get the specific information. Or general. The general Quick idea. Information. Right, to get the general information or idea. So reading idea. quickly to get the general <laughs> idea. Yeah. Scanning, number four. Muhammad, reading. what do you think? Reading the text quickly. Read the text. Uh, reading the, the, the text uh, quickly. To get no. that. Quick reading for specific information. Great, for specific information to get specific ideas now, what about inferring inferring using what you know to 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 make a guess about what you don't know <laughs> i guess the, the meaning behind the text or the attitude of the of, of, the, of the, the meaning okay from the text 
to know about the attitude of the writer, the message of the writer, yeah. the mood of the writer, the feeling of the writer. Yeah. It's it. Okay. Now, what's yeah. the difference between intensive and extensive? Intensive. Intensive is in the classroom and it's short. And the purpose is? The purpose is for um, studying the language and learning. Great, Aisha. In, in, Aisha or Ines? It's Ines. <laughs> Great, yeah. Muhammad? Intensive is a, is a, is a last uh, short times and extensive reading is a last uh, long times and for pleasure. Great. And the place of extensive, who is the place? The classroom? Out classroom and the extensive other Extensive at home. Ex intensive, at yeah. Just at home? Extensive at home or outside, outside classroom. And yeah, room. outside. Yeah, <laughs> Where, right. wherever you want. Yes. Reading stages, how many stages are there? Three. Three stages. Three stages. Pre reading, while reading, and post reading. Yes. Bravo, great job. You are really wonderful future teachers because you know a lot and uh, you are very passionate about teaching and you know very interesting points about reading um, as a receptive skill. Thank you. So if there, are, if there is any question on WhatsApp group, and of course I'm going to, uh, I mean, to share with you some exercises in Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. the deadline of submission okay um what about the deadline of today's time okay. regarding the this, where, what uh, should be this what we should design yeah. i'm going to 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 um uh, to give you the the deadline in google uh, all right you find the deadline. Thank you. okay no questions so far i have a question no Everyone i have a question thank you yes Aisha, you have a question good um, Yes, please, Aisha. Question, I'm green. No? Okay. Sir, uh, no, uh, everything is clear. Thank you. Great. I do have a question, sir. Yes, please. Go ahead, ask. Boom, boom. Yeah, what is... Question. <laughs> what is... How is Makhnes, <laughs> right. by the way? It's wonderful. Great, thank you. I'm yeah. sorry for being late. I, I was working. Yeah, it's all okay. I yeah. didn't attend the session from the but beginning. It's recording right now. No, no problem. All right. So my question is, what is uh, synthesizing? And what's the difference between inferring and synthesizing? The, the difference between inferring and? Synthesizing. Good. Yes. Inferring is when you try to read the text and to get from the, I mean, from the meaning of the text, you get the message of the writer or the attitude of the writer or the mood of the writer because you will not find words talking about the mood or talking about the attitude or talking about the message, but behind the lines, you will find the message or the mood or the attitude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's all. Uh, it's also for uh, uh, coming with the conclusions, right? Yes. To conclude yeah. something. To conclude, thank you. It's it's the same. Now, synth synthesizing is when you depend on different resources. You depend on the picture. You depend on the coach. You depend on the reference. You depend on this information. Then you can have a good understanding of the text. Okay. Yes. So, but up to now, just try to focus on five or six major sub skills skimming, scanning, predicting, pre teach vocab, summarizing, inferring. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, very welcome. All right. So, thank you. See you next week. Thank you very much. Um, have a good night. Yeah.